Here's an interview from one of our past shows on Rock and Metal Revival. If you're interested in hearing full shows, go to our Facebook page and check out our list of affiliates for times and places where you can hear Rock and Metal Revival. Anthrax album, Persistence of Time. There's Anthrax and Got the Time. And today on our show, we want to welcome in not only bassist, but author uh, of the new book called Fathers, Brothers, and Sons, Surviving Anguish, Abandonment, and Anthrax. We want to welcome Frank Bello to Rock and Metal Revival. Good morning, Frank. How you guys doing? Good morning. How, how, how is everybody out there? It's, uh, it's right now, and I'm about to go to the city right now, so it looks like a lot of rain, so I'm psyched about that. Nice, <laughs> nice. There you go. I, I, How's everything going out there? It good. is It is good. We're uh, right here in the middle of fall, so uh, I know you've been to Wisconsin a few times. You ever been here when it's really cold? Yes. Dude, <laughs> I've been there, yeah, quite a few times uh, when it's really cold. And January, February, those fun months. Oh, yeah. yeah. And um, to say the least, you freeze your balls off. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yep. Now, now, Frank, we both just finished up reading your new book called "Fathers, Brothers, Sons: Surviving Anguish, Abandonment, and Anthrax." What inspired you to tell your story now at this time? Because it is an amazing one. Wow. Well, thank you for the kind words. And I have, look, you have to understand where I'm coming from. Thank you, because I don't really know how to handle this, to be honest. Because a lot of people are coming in with a lot of nice words for it. I'm very thankful and grateful for that. Um, this took part because of COVID, man. Um, Joel McIver, my co-writer, and I have been talking about doing a book for about eight years. And as you know, I've been on the road for those eight years. (laughs) I haven't been home. I haven't been home a lot. And Joel's got his own life going. He's got a lot of books he's doing. So um, it was time. And, you know, I've been through a lot of therapy um, throughout my life. And what I found in um, during COVID, I found a lot of people hurting. I just see a lot of pain, a lot of Mm -hmm. Just for different reasons, you know, aside from everything, this was my pain, uh, abandonment, and it was a big subject with me growing up. And um, But I just kind of wanted to give back a little bit and say, look, I brushed myself off, you know, from this, this, this life I've had. Um, the, the strong women in my life, it's dedicated to the strong women in my life who took the ball and ran with it after I was abandoned from my dad. So I thought it was important for a lot of people to understand and deal with loss and... Uh, how to brush yourself off and move on with your life. And, and a lot of people are coming to me and writing to me and thanking me uh, for inspiring them. And it means so much to me. You don't understand. It's not just a metal book. There's a lot of great rock and roll stories in there, and I'm very proud of them. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, the whole Anthrax thing, there's Metallica, Slayer, all, the, all of my friends hanging out with them, Pantera, great stories with them. But there's also a lot of, um, a lot of thought and, uh, about what, how to move on from loss. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I so many parallels, man, cuz I was I'm a musician too, so I grew up and loved Kiss. Saw the Kiss Alive 1 album in the store and just fell in love and had to have it and got home and never looked back, you know. Kind of like what you did. And I was exactly. blown away when I read right at the beginning of the book that you got to meet the band Kiss before before they took off the makeup while they were when downtown when they're coming out of business business meetings and stuff now how did you not get killed by security and stuff great great question I mean, and this, they were yeah. they weren't letting anybody near them <laughs> no man those are the days they had this great security dude that two and a couple of these guys and we actually got to know them but i'll be i'll be honest with you my friend tom and i um tom had some kind of connection where he got calls and mm. this is all in the book he got calls we were these diehard Kiss fans, 15, 16, maybe 14 years old. Um, and Tom would have this connection in their management in the city. And he would get calls. They said, they're going to be in town for a meeting. So if you want to stay around outside, they're going to be there. And Tommy and I would get on a bus, cut school, <laughs> go downtown, <laughs> and, and, wait for, and wait for these six foot and above guys because we didn't know what the, those are the days where you didn't know what kiss looked like yeah they had they always wore masks and stuff when they were out in public so we just waited for guys in suits with long hair that was six feet above because we knew they were tall dudes mm-hmm. and we waited in front of their management long story short these guys would come in and yeah it was kiss and they were very great they were great to us they were they were kind we asked them every question in the book of about anything they did, what was coming out, what what's the next record like, mm-hmm. what what's the next tour, every kiss c- question you had, we asked them, and they were great with us. Wow. Specifically, Gene, yeah. who I'm proud to say wrote the forward to my book. Yeah, and you have to understand. You're a Kiss fan, so you'll understand oh, yeah. it. Oh yeah. After oh, yeah. all these years having Gene Simmons write your forward, and 
even know who I am. And, and I'm, you know, he gets it. And he, he complimented my bass playing. And he had the same, uh, like, abandonment issue. And the, the way he wrote that was it was so poignant and, and just beautiful, beautifully written by Gene, uh, the whole forward. So I'm very privileged. I'm very grateful. So I think people will really enjoy it, especially KISS fans, to tell you the truth also. Exactly. A lot of great KISS stories. Yeah. It, it, now, Frank, I found it interesting when you wrote about meeting your heroes and being humble enough and friendly to your fans. I find, I've been fortunate enough to meet a lot of my musical he- heroes, and I'm glad they were all cool. Like uh, the first time I met Ace Freely, I was just totally blown away with what a great sure. guy he was. Uh, you know, that yeah. means a lot to the fans, and I know it meant a lot to me. How is it now when you get to meet your your fans from Anthrax? It's a great question because, you know, back in the day... Um, I learned from these amazing musicians. These were my heroes. Kiss, they taught me how to be. If I ever made it, because they, they, they really dictated what I wanted to do. As soon as I saw Kiss, I said, yes, that is exactly what I want to do. And then there's another story in the book with Steve Harris. Mm-hmm. Um, if, you, and with Steve Harris, the first time I met Steve, way back in the day, Electric Lady, Steve, um, Electric Lady, they were mixing a record. He was actually in the studio, but he was having dinner around the corner. So we found out Steve was <laughs> mixing the record. Again, we went downtown, freezing <laughs> our asses off in New York winter, yeah. waiting outside. So we, we buzzed the... <laughs> I, I laughed because I, I envisioned us doing this because we were just these kids that had balls of steel, my friend Tom specifically. So we buzzed the, the, the button uh, to get downstairs to Electric Lady. Of course, they didn't let us in. There was a camera. Yes, could I help you? We're here to see Steve. <laughs> so, of course, they didn't, my, he said he's having dinner. So this is in Greenwich Village, New York City. So we knew most of the restaurants. So we went looking around the corner. So <laughs> we're stocking. freezing, shivering. <laughs> yeah, we're shivering our asses off. And lo and behold, we look up to this, this big restaurant with a big glass window. And who's sitting right in front of it? Steve Harris having dinner by himself. <laughs> Now, this, nice. this amazing person sees us freezing outside, and he knows we're, kiss, oh, we're Iron Bay fans, so he calls us in. He calls us in because he didn't want us to freeze. He called us in, and he goes, have a seat. <laughs> Imagine this Iron wow. Maiden, Steve oh, Harris, diehard fans, and this, this amazing human being uh, who I'm, I'm grateful yeah. and honored to say is my friend now, invites us in and has dinner, and we, we chat about Iron Maiden and all things. It was just amazing, and he taught me the way to be. These people that I grew up with, Kiss, Iron Maiden, all these great, amazing musicians, bands. They taught me how to be, and that's what I try to do now while I'm in the band Anthrax. I'm in this band, and they say, look, if a fan wants to talk, of course. If there's time, we do, everything's ready, let's just hang out and talk. And any questions, you want a signature, want a picture, all good. Nice, nice. Now, how did you develop your right-hand technique? Because my, <laughs> I, I, I talked, I, we had Steve, Steve Harris on one time and dude you talk about nerves oh my goodness yeah yeah and <laughs> and i asked him i was like have you ever thought of doing a, a instru- uh, instructional video because you I mean your right hand technique is just phenomenal i mean and he's like nope <laughs> 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 That's about it. it's like man really yeah. but i mean you guys you're playing thrash you guys are you got a lot of intricate rhythms and stuff and uh tough tough parts to play man and I don't. I don't well, see how you do it. <laughs> well, my my thing was, and thank you for the compliment. For for me, it was just developing. Look, I'm a big Steve Harris fan, as you know. Mm-hmm. Getty Lee, Geezer Butler, those are my go-to guys. So what I would do when I was younger, I would, you know, have my bass out, go to the, go to the couch if I just watch TV, and I just I knew I had to get steadier and faster with my fingers. Mm. So I would just keep doing and building my momentum up in my right hand and building up the muscles because I knew what pace I had to go to. Yeah. And uh, continuously, day, week, week to week, month to month, year to year. And after a while, it finally became where I can keep up with, with the songs I wanted to play. So that's pretty much it. It was all homegrown stuff. You know, I didn't, you know, <laughs> there's no, there's no uh, training thing for that. I just <laughs> learned on my own. And uh, I, I, I try to tell people that, whatever I could do to help. Nice. That's awesome. Yeah, we want to thank Frank Bello for uh, stopping by and talking to us today on Rock and Metal Revival. Some interviews, we have lots more questions. Only got uh, 10 minutes on that one. And uh, Frank wanted us to let everybody know that that book is out and available in stores. Fathers, Brothers, and Sons, Surviving Anguish, Abandonment, and Anthrax. And Jerry and I both give it the thumbs up. And he also wanted us to play the song Time. Here's Anthrax on Rock and Metal Revival. 